Hello and welcome to Ada Pulse, the community funded news channel, keeping you up to date with all the news and emerging projects that are in and around the Cardano ecosystem. And today we are discussing Orc Facts, a decentralized oracle protocol in Cardano. And this is by our veteran writer, Libeline, been with us for a hell of a long time. He's got some great Twitter threads as well, so do check that out. And today we're just going to briefly discuss what is an oracle, the importance of the oracle, and what Orc Facts is. So do remember to click the like button, hit subscribe, and hit the bell button so you get notified as soon as we've got content available. I'm Josh from ATM Staple, your presenter for Ada Pulse for today. Let's just crack on with this. Now, obviously, the first place we need to start is what is an oracle. And it's essentially like middleware essentially a middleman, but middleware that serves as a bridge between the blockchain or a smart contract on that blockchain uh, to the outside world. So on the most basic level, it's allowing smart contracts to access information that's not stored on the blockchain. And with oracles, you can take data from everyday events in the real world, like is it icy or is it snowing outside? Now, blockchain oracles, they're designed to just transfer data but also protect it from being tampered with. That's their goal. They don't create data. So in this sense, they didn't make it snow, for example, but or make it not snow. They're just telling you securely that it was snowing or not. Now, insurance is something that's commonly talked about that can be done on the blockchain. Now, but how can you manage an insurance contract you know, on the blockchain if it's only reading token transactions? It's just simply not possible. Well, not without losing reliability anyway, because anyone could have made that. So this is why we need oracles. So in the example I gave you, is it snowing? Let's say I'm making, uh, you know, uh, an insurance claim on my car. I skidded in the snow and I crashed. It was an accident. Well, you know, they can work out, my, the Oracle can work at my geographical location, was it snowing that day, and securely tell the smart contract with accuracy that it wasn't snowing and that I'm making it up and I'm making a false claim. Now, working with external data, as you can imagine, is, is actually quite difficult. The smart contract code could be perfect, but someone could sort of fool the system by attacking the external data source, which is, you know, the Oracle. So, Oracle decentralized networks are a means to securely connect sort of on-chain and off-chain environments in a framework of reliability. So if like, because if Oracles don't meet the same sort of security standards and reliability uh, as the blockchain, the entire smart contract is kind of at risk, even if the code for that smart contract is perfect. So building such a mechanism is like quite difficult and it's a big problem to solve since it's got to provide timely and accurate information while maintaining the decentralization of the data transmission in order, because it's got to be reliable. So if you want to know more about oracles in general, um, Libeline actually did an article, so there'll be a link in the description below. Now, if we're being honest with ourselves, Cardano doesn't really have too much going on in the way of Oracle projects at the moment. We've got Charlie 3, who's actually been on Cardano Explored, you know, interviewed by Blocksplained a couple of times on our channel. So you can check that out. We've got API 3 and the Emergo um, Oracle Pools projects uh, are also known. But you've also got Liquid Labs, who've announced the Oracle uh, for it, their protocol. And then you've got Indigo, which has an Oracle for its protocol. And a project has been announced by Wolfram um, Blockchain Labs. We don't know much of its progress. And there's also talk that Chainlink is going to be integrated into the Cardano network. But at far, as of now, we haven't got any news on that. Cardano Open Oracle Protocol. So Cardano Open Oracle Protocol, or COOP, um, but we're just, let's call it COOP. Should we call it COOP? So COOP is essentially a set of technical guidelines that specifies the process and format for the publication and consumption of off-chain data by smart contracts on the Cardano blockchain. And it's um, a mechanism free from control of any entity. Now, OrcFax is inspired by the Oracle pool of the OGO model, distributed blockchain price oracle i'll leave a link in the description below but this mechanism works by sort of getting together nodes into pools while keeping like each node incentivized autonomously from each other and the data that is added goes through a set of processes before it's actually available to the smart contract 
Now, with the Vassal hard fork came the implementation of SIP31. Now, what SIP31 does is it allows multiple consumers to read data written into a single EUTXO without competing f- with each other for exclusive access to the transaction output. So essentially, it's allowing multiple users to see a transaction output without actually spending it. Now, the development of Coop was led by Orcfax with expert advice from M Labs as well. Now, there was three main objectives for the coup. Firstly, you have financial sustainability. Minimizing the cost and deposit required to publish, maintain and use fact statements on chain, providing opportunities for cost sharing among stakeholders. Secondly, you've got data accessibility, minimizing the probability that the fact statements referenced by users are not available for their DAP transactions. And then thirdly, and lastly, you have security, minimizing the risk of exposing the cryptographic keys used to verify the authenticity of the fact statement. Now, the OrcFax Oracle service will collect data on, on real world events, but from various sort of primary sources using a network of decentralized nodes. So much think of it a bit like Cardano, actually. The nodes will be managed independently and it's permissionless, so anyone can do it. You know, anyone can install the software, but you've got to commit a small amount of fact tokens as the stake. Oh, by the way, they have a token. But it's used uh, in the OrcFax network to pay for the publication of data and to reward the participants in the Oracle pool. Now, wherever possible, OrcFax will collect raw data from at least three independent sources to kind of triangulate and average the information. So let's take price of ADA in US dollars as a simple example. So Altfax nodes will sort of query the Kraken, Binance and CoinGecko APIs in an average amount. And and there you have it. So check out this image. The collected source data will be sort of normalized into a standard schema, encoded and circulated through the decentralized set of oracles, validating that the exact same data has been collected and tabulated. And the data points published by the Altfax oracles are called fact statements. Um, The participants that interact in the COOP protocol are the publisher, which requests and publishes a fact statement, and the consumer, which only reads the content of a fact statement. If the consumer requires already published information, the AltFacts node will respond with the UTXO identifier, which the consumer can freely use as a SIP31 reference entry in its script. Otherwise, the consumer will pay the, you know, the applicable fee in, in fact token, receiving a signed transaction from Altfax that it will send to the Cardano network. Now, each fact statement is uniquely identified within a catalog. So that means the publisher can provide a search interface, which is then used to determine types of fact statements that are available by this particular publisher you know, like their publication frequency and the fee charged per publication transaction. The fact statements catalogue and its search interface are outside the scope of Coop and will be developed by publishers, you know, running their own Coop implementation on technical infrastructure of whatever they like. The main value offered by a Coop publisher is that the fact statements bear your digital signature to validate authenticity. The integrity of the Coop protocol is based on the reputation of the publisher, its quality controls and the security of the cryptographic keys used to, you know, authorize the publication of fact statements. Now, the incentive for participants in the Coop network is the bounty, which is part of the publication fee paid by the data consumer. And it will be distributed after after successfully collecting the source data and achieving network consensus on its normalized form so everyone's singing from the same hymn sheet so to speak the protocol will draw the reward among the nodes successfully participated in that fact statement randomly assigning fact tokens now fact is a native cardano token and is the same token that will be used for staking and data validator rewards now all facts will maintain public audit trails So the flow of information through the service can be monitored by pretty much anyone. Then nodes that submit inaccurate or false data will be punished by deducting a portion of their staked fact tokens as a penalty or slashed, some call it. 
And their node reputation score will also be affected as well. Now, the team proposes its initial stake pool offering, or ISPO, to, to fund their project. And it proposes this method as a way to acquire Orkfax utility token on the open market. So just remember, this isn't a free ISPO like many others. Like you stake with it, you get your aid of reward, but you also get their token. This is your money as their pool, you know, has like a 99% margin. So it's definitely a funding round, not a way to get like tokens out there just for liquidity. Now, as of now, there hasn't been any tokenomics published. So, I mean, although personally, you know, I think most tokenomics are bullshit. They're basically always a pie chart. But the trick is, when it is released, what you've got to check out is the allocation. Because when you have team, marketing, server costs and operations all on the same chart as separate things, you kind of being hoodwinked a little bit because you could have easily just summarized that in one massive chunk as one whole thing. So do look out for that in the chart when it is released and with any tokenomics charts you're looking at. So the protocol will be open source and made publicly available um, on GitHub. The resulting fact statements and their metadata will be stored on Rweave. If you don't know what Rweave is, it's a bit like IPFS. If you don't know what IPFS is, they're basically sort of immutable decentralized storage. I actually personally use Rweave for my music, music videos, and even my children's pictures I like to store on Rweave. So I love it. I think it's great. It's so easy to use. It's, it's brilliant. So I do recommend it if you want to start doing stuff like that. But back to Orkfax. They've announced that they will launch on the Cardano mainnet in quarter two of this year. So that's 2023. So exciting times. So that brings us to the end. If you want to know more about the founder and what else he's been involved, remember the full article can be found on the Ada Pulse website, along with all the other articles that we don't have a chance to make videos for. And it's worth pointing out, remember, Orkfax didn't actually pay us to do this video. We're funded through Catalyst. Remember, that's why we do these videos. So do remember to click the like button, hit subscribe and hit the bell button so you can get notified as soon as we've got content available. And share far and wide. We just want to educate people, you know, and we want to reach as far as we can. And I'm Josh from ATM Stakepool, your presenter for Pulse for today. And I'll see you next time. Thank you.